Hello and welcome to yet another South Korean college scholastic ability test, which is the famous test that South Korean high school students take in order to go to college. Today we are going to take a look at the final problem of the test taken by students who went to college in 2020. It says, for a positive real number t, let ft be the value of real number a such that two curves y equals t cubed ln x minus t and y equals 2 e to the power of x minus a meet at only one point. Find the value of derivative f prime of one third squared. Now let's summarize the problem once more because the problem itself can be a bit confusing to be fair. When t changes, this first curve of y equals t cubed ln x minus t also changes. Consequently, the second curve also changes in order to meet the first curve at only one point, meaning that the value of a in the equation of the second curve also changes. This means that the aforementioned value of a that makes two curves meet at only one point depends on the value of t. In other words, a is a function of t. The problem denotes this a as ft, and we want to find the value of f prime one third squared. Now let's actually solve this problem. Suppose that two curves meet at a point where its x coordinate is k. Notice that when t changes, this x coordinate also changes. Hence, k is also a function of t. Now let's recall what we have learned in calculus about two curves meeting at a single point. There are two important relations we can use. First, two functions have the same y value at x equals k, so we have t cubed ln k minus t is equal to 2 e to the power of k minus a. And let's call this equation 1. Second, two curves have the same slope at that point. That is, they have the same value of derivatives at x equals k. And for this problem, let us use the Leibniz notation for derivatives instead of Lagrange's notation, because we have to take derivatives with respect to more than one variable throughout the solution, and that is more straightforwardly reflected in the Leibniz notation. So the derivatives are for y equals t cubed ln x minus t, the derivative dy over dx is given as t cubed divided by x minus t, and for y equals 2 e to the power of x minus a, dy over dx is given as also 2 e to the power of x minus a. Therefore, the slope condition gives t cubed divided by k minus t is equal to 2 times e to the power of k minus a. And let's call this equation 2. If you consider t as some predetermined fixed constant, then these are equations of k and a. This is the case for many easier problems, where you have to solve for k and a in order to determine the point of tangency and the exact second curve. But this problem is a bit trickier. Here we want to find the value of f prime one third, which is the value of the derivative dA over dt when t is equal to one third. Now this seems like a tough question, but consider this. We don't actually need to find a here. We only need dA over dt. And most importantly, we can just take derivatives of one of the two equations with respect to t in order to make dA over dt appear. Let's take the first equation because it is easier to differentiate with respect to t. So we differentiate with respect to t, but we must be careful. Here, k and a are also functions of t, so whenever we differentiate the expression with k or a in it, we have to apply the chain rule accordingly. So on the left hand side, we first have to use the product rule. So derivative of t cubed, which is 3t squared, then ln k minus t, plus now t cubed times the derivative of ln k minus t, 
And this is the part where the chain rule kicks in. So first, we just differentiate the logarithm as if k minus t is a single variable, which gives 1 over k minus t. Then, according to the chain rule, we differentiate k minus t with respect to t. And since k is also the function of t, we have dk over dt minus the derivative of t, which is 1. So this is the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to t. And on the right-hand side, we also apply the chain rule. So first, differentiate with respect to k minus a, which just gives 2 e to the power of k minus a. And then differentiate k minus a with respect to t. And since both k and a are functions of t, we have dk over dt minus dA over dt. Now let's use equations 1 and 2 to simplify the terms on the left-hand side. First, for this part, let us write 3 over t first, then we have times t cubed ln k minus t. Then by the equation 1, this part right here is equal to 2 e to the power of k minus a. And by the equation 2, this part is also equal to 2 e to the power of k minus a. So we have 3 over t times 2 e to the power of k minus a plus 2 e to the power of k minus a times dk over dt minus 1 is equal to 2 e to the power of k minus a dk over dt minus dA over dt. So 2 e to the power of k minus a nicely cancel out. And we know that we can cancel this part because we know that e to the power of k minus a cannot be 0. Then we have 3 over t here plus dk over dt minus 1 is equal to dk over dt minus dA over dt. So now dk over dt cancel out. And we have dA over dt is equal to 1 minus 3 over t. And this dA over dt is just what we need. Therefore, f prime of 1 third squared is equal to, if we let t equals 1 third in the above derivative, we have 1 minus 9, so this squared is equal to 64. And this is the answer. So that was the most efficient method in my opinion, but please allow me to explain another method of handling the equations. Previously, we have used implicit differentiation to obtain an expression containing dA over dt, but I think there are many people who first want to actually solve for a and then take the derivative. This is a bit of a detour compared to the previous method, but I will show you that this approach also works. Here, I am going to use the second equation because it gives simpler expression when we solve for a. If we multiply e to the power of a on both sides of equation 2, we have e to the power of a times t cubed divided by k minus t is equal to 2 times e to the power of k. So e to the power of a is equal to 2 e to the power of k times k minus t divided by t cubed. And by taking logarithm, we have a is equal to ln 2 plus k plus ln k minus t minus 3 ln t. And let's call this equation 3. Now before we take derivative, we have to utilize the still unused first equation. In fact, we utilize both first and second equations at the same time. Notice that they have the same right hand side. Therefore, their left hand sides also must be equal. So we have t cubed ln k minus t is equal to t cubed divided by k minus t. So cancelling t cubed because it is stated that t is positive, we have ln k minus t is equal to 1 over k minus t. Let's observe this relation for a while. 
it can be said that k minus t is the x coordinate of the intersection point between two graphs y equals ln x and y equals 1 over x, or the real root of the equation ln x equals 1 over x, which is a constant fixed value, approximately this value. Therefore, even if t changes and that causes k to also change, the value of k minus t remains constant. Therefore, we can write k minus t is equal to some constant c. Therefore, using this, an equivalently k equals t plus c, we can express equation 3 without variable k, which is a is equal to ln 2 plus t plus c plus ln c minus 3 ln t. And when we differentiate this with respect to t, we can treat this c as constant, thus giving 0 when differentiated. So this gives 0, this gives 0, and this gives 0. So we simply have dA over dt is equal to the derivative of t, which is 1, and the derivative of minus 3 ln t, which is minus 3 over t. And using this derivative, we can calculate the answer. Or there's another way to handle the situation. From equation 3, if we just differentiate with respect to t first, then we have dA over dt is equal to, the first term just gives 0, so dk over dt, plus, by the chain rule, first 1 over k minus t, and then differentiate k minus t with respect to t, so dk over dt minus 1, and then minus 3 over t. Here, let's call this equation 4. Then we return to the relation obtained by equating the left hand sides of equations 1 and 2. And instead of using that k minus t is constant, we do this. Since the functions on the left hand side and the right hand side are the same, their derivatives with respect to t also must be the same. Therefore, differentiating both sides with respect to t, we obtain 1 over k minus t, and then of course dk over dt minus 1 is equal to, first from the derivative of 1 over x, we have minus 1 over k minus t squared, and then we have to differentiate k minus t, so dk over dt minus 1. Now don't divide both sides with dk over dt minus 1 because that can be 0, and dividing with 0 doesn't make sense. Instead, we rearrange into 1 over k minus t and dk over dt minus 1. Then from the left hand side, we simply have 1. And from the right hand side, we have additional 1 over k minus t. And this is equal to 0. Here, if 1 plus 1 over k minus t is equal to 0, this gives k minus t is equal to minus 1. But from the graphs, and also from the fact that k minus t is inside the logarithm, k minus t must be positive, so this is invalid. Therefore, the only choice is that dk over dt minus 1 is equal to 0, hence dk over dt is equal to 1. This also means that k is given as t plus some constant c, which is the same condition we have obtained previously. So if we substitute this derivative condition to equation 4, this is equal to 1, and this is equal to 1, so this entire part becomes 0, so we simply have dA over dt is equal to 1 minus 3 over t, so we arrive at the same derivative, same answer. And that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. And please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you in another video.